Hey everyone, thanks for watching again. In this video, I'll show you how to solve for a common problem that I get asked about a lot. That is, you want to be able to set up the responses from a Google form to go to a Google spreadsheet. Then you want to set up formulas in the Google spreadsheet based upon those responses from Google forms. But your equations that you set up in the subsequent columns get deleted or copied over with every new response from Google forms. Well, keep watching and I'll show you how to fix that issue. And if you watch to the end, there'll be two bonus lessons as well. So let's dig in. All right, so this Google form, which asks customers for their first and last name, their email address, their shirt size, and their shirt color feeds into a responses spreadsheet that I have over here. You'll notice that with each response, I get a column that includes the timestamp of the form response, a column for the customer's name, one for their email address, and their shirt size and color. I want to build formulas in the columns that follow the response columns so that I have some back-end tracking and reporting. In column F through H, I want to set up a formula for the month, the weekday, and the year from the timestamp in column A. If you want to learn more about how to do that, I'd highly recommend watching my video titled Date Formulas in Excel, which will work in Google Sheets as well. I'll put a card at the top of this video and a link in the description below. I also want to set up a VLOOKUP formula in column I that will look up the price based on the shirt size. I have that price list on the VLOOKUP tab down here. If you want to learn how to do the VLOOKUP formula in Google Sheets, I'll add a card up top and a link in the description below as well. I want to drag these formulas all the way down columns F through I so that these are all automated every time a new response is added. After I do that, I want to have this information flow to a pivot table on the reports page that tells me how much money I make it each month and on each weekday. You can see that when I click on the row 10, 11, 12, and so on, the formulas are all there. But watch what happens when a new response gets added in column 10. The formula in row 10 gets erased by the new response. That means that every time a new response comes in, I'm going to have to come in here and drag these formulas down if I want the pivot table over here to remain accurate, unless there's a way to work smarter and not harder. This is where one of the handiest functions within Google Sheets comes into play, the query function. It's really simple actually. The best way to describe it is that we are going to create another sheet and then have Google Sheets automatically copy and paste everything to that new sheet, but only the columns that we tell it to copy and paste. So the first step is to create a new sheet right next to the form response pages. I'll name it New Responses. Then in cell A1 I'm going to type equals query and then an opening parentheses. Now I'm going to go back to the form response page and select the columns that I want to bring over to the new sheet. I'm only going to select the columns that represent the original form responses, which would be columns A through E. I'll then close the formula with a closing parentheses. Now I can hit enter and all the information from the other page will come over. The next step is to reset up my formulas. I'm wondering if I can just copy and paste the original formulas that I set up to make it faster. Sweet, it worked. Now I can just autofill all of these formulas. Then I'll show you the difference between the original form response page and our new sheet when we add a new response. Now that I have these autofilled, let me show you something quick. You'll notice that on the form response page, the formulas are still showing up in row 11 in columns F through I. They are also showing up in the row 11 of columns F through I on our new sheet. But watch what happens when I add a new response from the form. Now you can see that on the original form response page, the formulas were replaced by the new response which left these cells empty. But on our new sheet, these formulas still remain and are picking up the necessary information we need. Pretty cool, right? The last step is to set up a new pivot table so that our information is automated and we should never have to touch this page again. I'll just delete the old pivot table and start from scratch. I highlight columns A through I on the first page and then click on pivot table from the data tab. Add it to a new sheet. Now I just put the months in the rows field and the price in the values field. Now I'll create one more pivot table for the days of the week and we'll be good to go. There's actually so much more that you can do with the query function in Google Sheets. It acts as almost like a coding in a sense. I'll give you two quick bonus lessons, and these are extras. But before I dig into that though, I am going to take eight seconds to ask you to do something to help me out. 
make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. If you do that, you'll get notified every time I post a new video. Also, hitting the like and share buttons and leaving a comment will help promote my channel to get it out there for more people to see and learn from. All right, so in the first bonus example, I'll show you how to select only certain columns with the query function. For example, let's say, since I only really care about the timestamp and the shirt size, I can query just those two columns. I just need to adjust the query a bit. I'll start a new sheet to show you that. I start the query the same as before by typing equals query, then an opening parentheses. I'll select the table of the data I'm looking at. Now instead of closing the equation, I'm going to type an opening quote, then type the word select, then a space, then type A for column A, a comma, and a D for column D. Now close in quotes and a comma. The last part of the equation is asking if your table has headers. And if so, what row are the headers on? Zero means that there is no header. I'm going to type one to say that the header is on the first row. Now I close in parentheses. And when I hit enter, you can see that it only pulls over column A and D. The next example I'll show you is essentially setting up a filter within the query function. Let's say that I only want to pull the timestamp and the shirt size, but only if the shirt size is a small. I just need to adjust my query function one more time. After the D, I'm going to add a space and then type the word where, then a space, then a D, then the equal sign and a space, then a single quote, then the letter S for small, another single quote. Now the formula should be set up the way I want it. When I hit enter, you can see that it only pulls column A and D and also only looks at rows that have the small shirt size. You can probably imagine how this might be very handy. Thanks for watching. If this video solved any kind of problem for you, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Watch out for a new video next week. Until next time. Hey guys, how you doing? If you learned something from this video, you're gonna to wanna to do a couple things. First, you're gonna to wanna to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. If you do that, you're gonna be the first one to get notified when I post a new video, which is about once a week. I'd also ask that you hit that like button and the share button, and then tell me what you learned in the comment section. If you do all of those things, this video is actually gonna get out there for more people to see and to learn from. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.